Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's live Q and A session with me and Mr. Chris Palmer, um, <laughs> who we don't really need these introductions anymore. Um, but as part of the process, I've also got to tell you about ODYS Age Domains hundred pound sign up bonus. So make sure you also do check that out um, if you're interested in age domains. Good solid age domains do help you. And um, so not just try to flog your garbage. But I've got one thing to say, Chris. Flog. Fred <laughs> Hutterson. Fred Hutterson has went down in my estimation. Because Jonesy beat him today. Jonesy beat him, Fred, <laughs> for the first time. In a long time, you've been beaten to the punch with the first comment. So, Jonesy <laughs> wins the first comment award. Battle, for yeah. <laughs> uh, Fred, you have let your standards slip. Um, but Fred is there, and it's great to see you, Fred. Um, Arla see you. is here. Mark Flanagan, Randy Road Day. And also, let us know who else is there as well, because we don't always hear from a lot of the guys that sit there. Like, Fred, you're always there at the start, and you never ask a question. Um, so, yeah, um, ask your questions. Um, and... <laughs> oh, Fred posted two hours ago, but you changed. I'm not sure if I changed anything, but I'll take your word for it, because you are always first. Um, Craig, ask Chris for his... A rendition of Tupac's album. <laughs> yeah, I almost got a freaking uh, a copyright strike yesterday. I, I, I was meaning to show. I was trying to show the screen, and I guess the uh, I learned afterwards because I went in to check, and all the audio that I was playing through the speaker came through the microphone. Um, so I had to cancel my video. I had to take down the video. It's horrible. Fuckers. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mr. Mullins is here. Mullins, <coughs> how are you? Andy Drinkwater is also here. Um, Shag Nasty is his nickname. Um, so Sal Qu Sack Lane. Chris Palmer, sir, how to show Google I use a product and write article Google product review update problem. So I'm going to guess that he's he's got an issue with that um, product review update that everyone in the last couple of weeks has been um, going on about, um, and he's looking to res resolve that problem. So, Chris, have you any um, tips you can give? Um, is he running into issue within GMB? Is it within GMB? Yeah, is it, is it because... You know, we ran into a similar problem, and when we added in a different secondary category, uh, we were then able to start adding in products. Um, so if, if that's what you're asking, that's the workaround for that. You got to pick a secondary category that allows product uploads, like you have products and services, if that's what you're getting at. If it's anything else, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us know if that helps you. If it doesn't, then come back and slightly adapt the question and we will um, come back to it. So let us know um, and we'll hopefully try and help you. Um, thoughts on the AI content. Um, so Andy Drinkwater, when you guys get started, I want to know your thoughts on AI content. I'm seeing some of those created that have started to rank quite well. Do you think this is a problem for the future? Something I've spoken about, but Chris, what is your answer first and foremost? No, I, I really like AI as far as for being an assistant. At first, I really didn't, but seeing some of the processes that the writers are using or utilizing in order to create longer form content with the assist of AI is definitely beneficial for us. And then moving forward, it's it's one of those things. It's like, um, there's like a saying, like get down or lay down. I think if that's what everyone's doing, it'll become the norm. Um, then it's just a matter of finding the right one that works with your flow. So I don't see a problem with it. Um, to, to, I'm going to give a slightly different answer. Um, now, obviously, I think you know people are, are are experimenting, playing around. I do think if you rely heavily on 
uh, that kind of content, you will get slapped further down the line if you're relying only on that, if it's not mixed up, changed, tweaked, edited, and made better um, by tools. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think we will see a slap coming on um, from Google. And for me, my strategy is I don't mind using things like that or spinning tools, Quillbot, whatever, paraphrasing tools to to throw stuff out there. Um, you know, I throw enough mud at the wall and see what sticks. If I throw 50 articles out there and five stick and are bringing me in traffic, I will get them done properly. Um, you know, that's that's my process. So I think they do have their place in the industry, depending on what type of content you're going for. But I do think you will get... Um, Slap down. In the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's just my opinion. What the fuck do I know, really? <laughs> All guesswork, but uh, just the way I think Google will work it. I could see that eventually. Yeah, if you're only relying on AI, I can't see... Because I've tried ranking just straight up AI. Like, I didn't make mo any modifications, and I was having trouble. But once I went in there and made... I Or not me, they made some changes. It definitely performed better. But I have yeah. yet to see anybody winning any harder type keywords with AI longer form type stuff, but you know, your, your, your main keywords, I, I haven't seen anything performing overly well. That's just straight AI content. Yeah. If you have an example, I'd love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Twok design, long time no see. Um, yo, yo, yo. What are you guys doing for content on your money sites? Do you use AI content writers or are you outsourcing stuff? Me, I have that out outsourced. Um, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to content, content's a loose word. Um, obviously, you've said money websites. Um, uh, most of my websites make money. Um, now, I will use specific tools. Like, I showed a tool last week, I think, Writer, um, which gives you a kind of blog outline and then someone will go in and edit it. Will I use AI for certain parts for depending on what it is and all that stuff? Yeah, um, but as Chris says, like you go in and make adaptions to it, um, and that is the the most important thing I can say, is the, the other part of the process, um, you know, the adapting things and stuff. So that, for me... Um, Obviously, it goes along with the same as the last answer, but um, hopefully that helps you talk. But have you got anything to add to, to Twok's question, Chris? Uh, as, as far as other sites, like the main site, if I do decide to put content on it, um, it's I just use uh, text to writer. Like if it's an SEO thing for my own, which I don't really do that much of, I just do it myself. For other projects that I'm running on, I have a writer. And they don't automate the content, but like exactly what you said. Like... Coming up, I forget what it is, but it'll do the outline. It'll do that beginning phrase for them. But yeah. what they're more, more or less automating is the process of adding the words that Surfer recommends. Um, they've automated that process. So it'll take whatever the recommendation is here and add it in here. Okay, I need 36 of this. Okay, it'll add it. I need 10 of this. It'll add it. I need four of this. Okay, it'll add it. Um, other than that, no, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question and hello to mr jake scott um <coughs> ryan pelleter um any expert <coughs> any expert tips on finding the best domains on spamzilla chris um i've had a massive amount of time spent inside of spamzilla and utilizing that tool uh playing around with it and what I found is not to disparage or say anything bad about Spamzilla, but I think that the domains that I'm finding the best success with were not found within there. You're searching from a pool that everyone's looking at. I think maybe it, you, you might have to do some more uh, manual type looking if you really want to look. Because anybody can go in there, put Trustflow 40, whatever comes up and go by. You, you need to be able to get to stuff that's not blatantly obvious to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know? So... That's my best advice. I don't know if that helps you with the actual tool. So the best tool, in my opinion, when I was using it, I was just sorting by Trustflow. So I'd look for like Trustflow 30 or better, Trustflow 40. And then I would look at the referring domains. And then I would check the Wayback Machine and be like, eh, is this good? Okay, Trustflow's high, referring domains match, bye. That was 
pretty much all the thinking I did. What I'd say to you, Ryan, is don't overcomplicate this. There is no expert tips like with Spamzilla. We all use slightly different metrics in terms of what you know, quality um, checks or whatever you want to call it. So Chris might use TF, I might use DR and traffic, and you know, I'm I've actually got a video coming out in a few days and um, showing people how. And in fact, I think the video is already out. How I look at expired domains on Spamzilla. What am I looking for? Is it previous rankings, previous traffic? What am I looking for in the way back machine? Is it content, whatever? Um, so everyone's got slightly different things, but that's as simple as that. There is no special trick to. I, I think I, I told a guy this a few weeks ago um, about Spamzilla, and the guy's like, "Craig, I've not found anything yet." You know, and he's been looking for two or three weeks. Different domains drop every other day, um, and different domains get listed in auction um, every other day. So it is a case of just trying to remain consistent. You can get frustrated with it, but I think uh, you know it, it, it's my phone, by the way. People okay. <laughs> um, I think you've just got to be consistent. The stuff's there. Filter it down. Use it. Use the filters to narrow the opportunities down. Um, that's all I can really say on that. But uh, there is no other special tips as such. <laughs> Just simple, straight to the point. Look for something with a decent bit of power that's clean, that has maybe content or a whole bunch of backlinks. Job done. Uh, Did, that's you... All I'm looking for. Did you make that thumbnail? What thumbnail? Uh, I went searching because I want to watch it. I want to see what you're doing. Um, the how to quality check domains, how to get yeah. quality age domains. Did you make that thumbnail, or did the VA did a VA make it? it my my graphic person done it, and it, it, I've got someone in the office that does that stuff. Um, so they're not not like a someone outsourced to. That's the person that edits all my videos and shit. So <coughs> she she sorts all of that stuff out, man. I don't make no graphics, man. My graphics are shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, oh, I, cool. like I like it. that. Yeah, I do. I like that. I like that blue that was chosen, or the green, however you want to look at it. I like that. Can and I just I... take back what I said, and can I take full credit? <laughs> you could. It, it is me. yours. It's got your name <laughs> on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, graphics is not my bag. It's garbage. Um, but live IRL fan, Chris, did you take down a CTR manipulation video, and what did he miss? Yeah, it had copyrighted uh, music in it. Unfortunately, I thought I shut everything off and I was opening up multiple windows to show some of the devices that we had up and the um, how, we're, how we're able to control the devices, multiple devices, Androids, iPhones, and be able to change location all on the fly. So I was just showing off what we built or what someone else built. <laughs> um, but the, the issue that, that happened was there was copyrighted music in there which shouldn't have been in there. And then on top of it, there was, it's music. So there's profanity and it's not something I wanted on my channel. Yeah. <clears throat> Fair enough. Chris, have you done anything with that cloud stacking program? We discussed a month or two ago, wondering if you've had success with it from Randy Rodi. Unfortunately not. Um, I was, no, I haven't messed around with that too much. What I've been playing with, um, Instead was another guy showed me something better, which is called cloud funnels. Um, and it integrates quite well with all of the cloud properties. So I've been just plugging that into all of the stuff. I'll probably show you guys on Thursday. I really like it a lot. Um, so I've been using that instead, cloud funnels. Interesting. Sadly, I've got a work state out on Thursday. I may have even popped in and uh, well, Thursday tomorrow. Yeah, I've got my works night out. So... I can't even join to to do my nosy. And Mark's coming to my works night out as well, so he probably won't be there, or he'll be there drunk. Um, <laughs> beware uh, with Mark in your group. Anyway, Adam Poland is here. Good afternoon, my man. Um, hope you're well. Sack, Sack Lane, best on-page optimization tools for on-page SEO. Chris, do you want to give us your top three? Uh, on-page optimization tools for on-page SEO. I use Page Optimizer. Uh, content writers use Surfer. So those are the two that um, we use. Um, another really good one that we've been using uh, lately has been InLinks. 
I don't know if you guys have played around with that at all, but it's yeah. definitely a good tool. Yeah, no, nah, I've had Dixon on my podcast when he launched that about a year ago. Um, solid tool, and more and more people are talking about it. So, yeah, I'm going to just go for those three as well because they are, um, you know, they're, they're the tools that I would tend to use. And I would also add RYTR Writer as just that blog uh, layout type of thing. Um, that's another thing that's on AppSumo. And the uh, that that can help as well. It's not really going to do on pages uh, optimization as such, but I think it helps along the way. So I'll throw that in as a little bonus. Um, you like that better than Word Hero? Yeah. Okay. But uh, no, it's a personal preference. There's nothing wrong. I'm not going to say anything bad about um, any other tools. But yeah, it's just personal preference, really, isn't it? It's uh, each to their own. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, I fucking got that booster jag yesterday and I've started to get a cough again. That fucking, honestly, man, it's grim. Um, <laughs> it's grim, but it's also cold as fuck over here as well. Um, What's cold? What to you is cold for dude, there? It's like zero. Like, oh, yeah, that's cold. There was snow and shit yesterday. So yeah, it's cold. It's cold, man. Like, you would, you would die. Yeah. You would have to. It's just. I think it's 40 oh, here, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's cold. <laughs> oh, um, I actually had a call yesterday with a friend who's, who is from Argentina, um, but she stays in London, but she went to Argentina for Christmas, and she literally showed me, um, like, her family by the pool and shit like that. I'm like, dude, what are you fucking doing? Like, I'm sitting here, and it's snowing outside. Like, please. They're sitting by the pool. <laughs> um, yeah, so massively jealous. But guys, if you haven't already, please give a like to the video. It does help. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, give that guy a wee subscribe as well because he does put out the odd occasional video that that you may find useful. Um, so yeah, check out his channel as well. <laughs> When I say odd occasional, that's a daily thing, um, not not a yearly or a monthly thing. So, yeah, he puts out a lot of content, so check oh, him out. Thank you. But Stephen Ramotowski, hopefully I've got that right, with your own affiliate sites, are you abiding by a certain content ratio in terms of commercial content, top 10 posts, to informational content, how-to posts? We're trying a split of 40 60, and I'm going to assume that is in favor of informational content to the 60%, just the way you've written that. Um, Chris, what's your are you going by any specific ratio? Yeah, generally, it's three to five. So we'll build out a high commercial intent page and then build out three to five supporting articles. That's what we've been doing pretty consistent, and it works very efficiently. Um, you can also look at same rush look at the competition and seeing the ratios that they're using um because it now has that little part in it where it's telling you um the the intent of it so i i, I don't have i don't work to a specific exact figure there but as we all know and as we've all seen that uh last year or whenever that crazy update came out and everyone that had the top 10 or the best and this, that, and the next thing were literally obliterated. So informational content is really important. So, uh, but I think going with a split of that is certainly, I don't see why that wouldn't work. You know, in, you know you're certainly in favor of informational content. So I don't see that being spammy at all. But if you said it was 65 or 70, also, equally, uh, I wouldn't be that fussed. Um, but there are certain websites out there who have like eighty percent informational content that just leads into a few sales. So there's no specific one is what I'm trying to say. So I'll shut up now because I'm just waffling. Uh, <laughs> waffling, Graham. Waff you got a lot of flogging. <laughs> You're on a roll today, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott Latham. The Mad Villa fan. Um, have you had a play with the Rank Math content AI yet? I don't. No. No, I haven't. 
I've not. I, I'm going to look at Rank Math again, though, because I, I bought a course from Matthew Woodward, and um, he, you know, relies heavily on Rank Math, and he likes it. I looked at Rank Math a few years ago, and I wasn't a huge fan, uh, but it's obviously evolved in something I need to possibly have another look at, so I am going to have a check out, but I've not played with it personally. But mm. if anyone else has in the chat, let us know if it's been a good thing. Um, how did it perform? Um, and how does it spit the content out? Is it readable? Um, so let us know, guys. Mark Flanagan, after opinions referring WP templates... Create a post with a header one tag, but then the title is copied as links within header three tags to post. Do you think Google ignores the H part of a link or or too many titles now? So adding too many um, header tags to your content, you think you can add too many to that, Chris? <clears throat> I don't think you can add too many but I think you still need to be within a particular range of zones on the page. I think whatever the norm is, like if I'm looking at the leading top 10 or 20 competitors or 10 competitors and everybody's got 27 headings, I probably want to get, you know, 27 headings on the page. I, I think going above board could be detrimental to your overall campaign. Yeah, I do. Um, I think that's why the, the tools like page optimizer pro suffer and all the other tools, really come into play um to be able to help you identify that kind of stuff easily um and for as you've said many times chris do what what other the, the winners are doing you know those top 10 or 20 replicate that because google's spitting that out onto the top page so i think that's a great um thing to to to, to look at um and hey chris and hey campbell hey hogden or whatever, uh, and he means Chamble. Um, I actually like Chamble. It's not actually an insult. Oggy, uh, you old git. Yeah, actually, I, I slide to Hogden's uh, shut off. He was on a webinar um, last week, and I went in, and I, I uh, slagged off his shut, and he called me an old git. That's what he's messaging. He WhatsApp me saying, you old git. So, Oggy, you're an old git. Yeah. What is Oggy shut just throwing it back at you, man. <laughs> back at you. And David Hennessy. So, yeah, that video is out. I, did, I didn't know if it was going out today or tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, it's out. And, and as I say, there's nothing special in there. It's just that's what I look for um, when I'm looking for domains. And people might have slightly different things, slightly longer-winded things. And uh, that's up to them. Fair play to everyone who, who does it. Um, Andy Drinkwater asks if you had to give just one recommendation for SEO and online marketing for 2022, what would it be? Can I give one first? Sure, use Grammarly. Um, because recommendation is not spelled like that, Andy. So, <laughs> spelling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Chris, what, what do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to give in terms of a recommendation? If you could only give one. Hmm. Um, only one project at a time. That would be my best advice. Uh, focus your energy uh, until you can see the first dollar and then move on. You know, I think getting, don't get, and, and yeah. I, if I only had to give one, that would be the first one. Focus your energy as, as much as you can. Dedicate time towards that and then move forward. Don't get a bunch going at one time. Um, it's detrimental. <laughs> Jordan is here. Um, and I'm going to steal Jordan's uh, thing. Fuck websites. Just go for GMBs. <laughs> I've seen Jordan uh, saying that. Um, and obviously with updates and, and all the fucking hacks and everything else that goes on my websites. He's actually got a solid point. Um, so GMBs, uh, 
you know, I think there's a lot of missed opportunity there, especially for people in the UK. I know you guys in America, you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry's in about the GMBs, but seeing the UK, people are not taking advantage of the stuff you guys are doing out there. Um, so I would say my one recommendation would be uh, to, to get involved in, in GMBs <laughs> and take advantage of everything that's there, the traffic that, that, and loads that can be generated from that, because I do genuinely believe that in the UK and probably many other countries around there, they are not operating at the same level and, and, and the same level of tricks and the same level of deviousness as you guys are doing in the, the US. And obviously, I went out to NFG Rockstars a few years ago and uh, I met Jordan, <coughs> Mike and all that stuff. And uh, I was truly shocked, you know, when I sat around the table and Jordan will be able to back me up on this, but there was dudes sitting there um that just made money through GMBs, obscene amounts of money only on GMBs. And you're just like, dude, <laughs> what's your business model? Or people are asking me, what do you do? And I'm like, I've got a bit of this and I've got a bit of that. And the guys are just like, yeah, me, I just do GMB shit. And I'm like, what? And they're just like, yeah, man, just going through, checking like thousands of GMBs and shit. And you're just like, how much money do you make, dude? And they're just the fucking all millionaires. And you're just like, fuck. Yeah. Um, and then, <clears throat> you know, people were talking about, you know, claiming the unverified ones and all this other funky shit. Um, and it blew my mind because I've never really been into to local in a big, big way. Um, I've done local, don't get me wrong, I've done local and I've done bits and bobs, but not to the level or scale that you guys are doing it. So that would be my one recommendation, Andy, um, for sure. Um, Randy, um, another thing... Um, <laughs> I know it's uh it's a fun I like playing around with toys, you know. I'm the same. I like well, I... Wizard's cool, but oh, this one does more. What I was gonna say actually, when you answered this question here, you said stick to one thing. Now, obviously, I've known you for a couple of years now, and we've done this for probably close on two years, um doing this stuff and um and obviously, speaking to you week on week on week, you've, you, you know you're always talking about something different. I'm going to do a bit of this. I'm going to do a bit of that. Have you actually found that maybe your scattergun approach has fucked you up in a lot of ways? Um, oh, maybe just because uh, because obviously, obviously I don't want to dig too deep into what you do, but it does seem like you are crazy and like got all these ideas. And I, I was the same. Um, you know when when you start to make a few quid, you're like, whoa, man, I could do a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of that and I'll make all this fucking money and then nothing gets done properly. So That's the problem. Is that exactly what, what's been happening with you over the, the past couple of years? Uh, oh, man, and because there's a lot of other – like even past what we speak about, you know, there's a lot of things that I'll, I'll go out and, and do. <laughs> you know? I can only imagine. Can only yeah. imagine. So yeah, for sure. You know, I'm just trying to stick with uh stick with one thing, run it up, and then uh move on. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, it took me a while to to do that. You know, I was the same. I had like eight projects in the go, and they were all half assed attempts at doing anything, and uh done that for many years. Um and yeah, I, I I'm still frustrated at the stupidity of it all, but uh You've got to feel the pain sometimes, but yep. that, good advice. Good advice. Andy says Craig is Mr. COVID. I think he is ground zero. <laughs> A bad joke there from Andy. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking, like, Ooh. Andy, you need to work on your uh, <laughs> banter. Um, <laughs> I'm but, sure he um, meant it as fun, though. Yeah, oh, of course. He's a good guy, Andy. Um, he's just these jokes are not always that good, although he thinks they're really good. Um, anyway, Battle FPV <coughs> when you use micro workers or anything for CTR, how many is it safe to run it at one? Have you found a threshold for diminishing returns? Um, so micro workers, I personally I don't use micro workers on GMBs as such, and I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to. But if you're talking about videos or, or, or web pages and stuff like that, I'm not running thousands at anything. Um, you know, 
maybe 50, maybe sometimes 70, maybe 90 something, but never really more than 100 um, at any one time. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm not sure how that would differ from GMBs. Now, I do play around with GMBs and I've got a video coming out with the phones and all that stuff. And again, you don't have to have 100 phones to be able to move a GMB. Um, so I'm going to guess that micro workers people are not throwing thousands at it, you know, at GMBs as such. So, Chris, when you're doing a bit of CTR for years, if you're using microwork, and first, in fact, first, do you even use microworkers for local stuff? I was a lot more than I am now. Uh, now, not so much. Because um, I was, my, my question would be, you know, is getting someone that's maybe in Indonesia, for example, um, you know, clicking on a local GMB actually going to make any difference now um if you're running some other stuff i mean can you get a result sure how long will it last is another story and then also too it, what else is coming in if you have a brand new profile and you're trying to ramp it up do i really want to start sending in international traffic probably not but if i already have something that's producing i'm in number position five or position four and i want to get some extra clicks for some specific keywords and variations of keywords can it help definitely so I think it depends on how new it is, how long it's been there. Is it actually getting traffic? Where are you at? But to answer your question, volume is very, very low. Um, very low. So let's say, just hypothetically, some local lawyer in in uh, Florida, what 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 would you run at that first and foremost? At like 10, 20, 50? Um, well, I'd have to figure out what they're currently getting for branded traffic. And then I would just slightly increase that. So we could say 10 because we're not sure what they're starting at. Yeah. Um, but I would be looking at branded first. I'm trying to increase the branded. Then I, what I, we usually do is we'll go into their insights and figure out what the top performing, what, what keywords are they already getting that are the most that are doing it. And we'll increase that more. So if I look inside the insights inside of GMB, there's usually 10 up at the top and it'll give you volumes. So the ones that say Pac-Man 10, we don't mess with those, but the ones that are up at the top, we want to increase what they're already getting. Um, so you just want to slightly increase, usually 10 or 20. It just depends on what it's currently at. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that 2020 update was brutal. Um, nightmare. But Craig Mullins is saying they've definitely done a lot with rank math. If you haven't looked for a few years, I'm a creature of habit. And um, Craig, um, once something's working for me, I, I don't like to change. And I was ignorant to that once because I used Ahrefs years ago and then I really got big into same rush and I hadn't looked at Ahrefs for years and they always just assumed it was the same shit. And then one day a friend showed me it in his office and I'm like, whoa, what the hell has went on here? Um, to the point where I've got the both of the tools because there's certain things I like in Ahrefs and certain things I prefer in uh same rush so sure. yeah always go back and check the tools have evolved don't be ignorant like me um so steven we're pushing out our affiliate content at an 80 20 ratio with the new google algo update hitting product review and commercial pages more informational content so <coughs> randy um is active in the affiliate space buying websites so he is certainly someone to 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 look at in terms of knowing what he's talking about so hopefully that helps you um so rank math doesn't actually spin and write the content it acts like suffer i guess for content guidance i.e average links header tags and images right cool um that's still good though because that then takes a tool out of the equation if rank math does that do you then need to go um to, to a POP, it just depends on how accurate it is to get that, how much content do we need and all that stuff. So, you know, <coughs> for me, the, the process will get easier because um, we, we most of us are using multiple different tools to do different things, and that's a bit tedious. Um, so, yeah, that, if that does that, then that's solid. Um, obviously, I don't know the quality of that guidance, but I'm pretty sure... It will be solid. I can't see them chucking out anything that's garbage. And uh, Adam Poland is verifying that the UK is miles behind with GMB. They certainly are. Um, and I would hate to see what it's like in some of the other kind of European countries and stuff. 
they probably don't even know what a GMB is, <laughs> uh, let alone you know half this you know the instant verification stuff and all the other cool stuff that you guys um, <coughs> do. So yeah, um, IQ SEO anti drink water hates spelling mistakes and was. F-K-E-D, as soon as he saw what he wrote, friggin' recommendations, misspelt again, obviously. Um, <laughs> don't know if he's on the booze. Is he on the beer, Andy? What the hell's going on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I hope Scott is saying, P.S., the Yoast versus Rank Math debate should never be a question that needs answered now. Rank math has blown Yoast back to 2015. Um, I need to check it out. As I say, it's a, something that's on my to-do list. And Mr. Mike Pierce, the legend there, thank you very much. Um, and the hottest show in SEO. Um, I agree, I agree. Um but cheers for that, Mike. And guys, the guys, Mike and Brad, are on tomorrow um, on their webinar. So go to nfgseo.com um, and make sure. No, that's a lie. I don't know what I'm trying to promote. Guys who were at NFG, the event, go because they've got a private thing tomorrow and they're going to be showing some cool stuff. So get along there, hit them up in Skype, harass them, get your way in there, um, find out what the fuck they're doing. So, yeah. Anyway, Jordan's saying, CTR isn't some magic bullet. Just use it as I need to give it some extra push. You will tax you know, if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I think people always have in their head like it has to be high volumes. I've never played around with crazy volumes, um, but Jordan and various other people like Chris and all the other guys that are doing GMB on a much more regular basis are more equipped to give that advice than me. Um, battle FPV, no problem. Um, so Shrek and his friends, how is your week going so far? SEO is the best. Does the SEO have all certain settings that you need or would you have to connect to another website for help and get access um seo is the best does seo have all certain settings that you need or would you have to connect to another website for help and access uh i'm not sure what the question is there my friend is that a statement or a question well i see a question mark i'm not really sure though i'm sorry yeah, i'm not sure what you mean by that of course you need to connect your website to search console analytics you can plug your website into semrush and get data and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, everyone's settings as such or tools that they use are going to be different. So um, let us, if you could elaborate more on that question, we'll take, we'll come back to it um, if you can, Shrek. Um, and I actually feel really awkward calling someone Shrek um, on a webinar. That's pretty grim. Um, <laughs> Chris, you actually look a bit like Shrek. I do, thank you. I love Shrek. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> Mike Pierce looks a bit like Shrek. He gives him, <laughs> throw him under the bus. Uh, <laughs> I'm only kidding, Mike. Um, so, Pierre Giorgio. Hi, guys. Do you use tier two links? Do you, Chris? Yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. That's um, the, the, you want, we were talking about, I don't, I forget who said it, but magic bullets. <laughs> those are that's like part of that's like a half a magic bullet you know definitely a helper again like anything you need to know what you're doing you can't just go and start ramming uh you know, GSA and everything yeah, yeah. Um, so it's you've got to understand what you're doing and, and volumes and when to do it where to do it and all that stuff so um be careful be careful but there's lots of advice and tips, and we've we've answered that question a million times. So tier two, 100 percent Why wouldn't you um power stuff up is essentially what I'd be seeing. Um, um live and learn, Stephen. So cool. Spot on, Scott. It's always done a better job, rank math. Haha. <laughs> Trying to do five things at once. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna work. I am not good at multitasking at all. Um, I thought I was. I've learned that I am not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need God mode. Initiate God mode Shrek. Yes. Um, all cheats enabled. Up and down, folks. Left, right, left, right. Up, down, left, right, start. You get 30 SEO lives in 2022. Lives, sorry. Fuck. Andy Drinkwater's bad spelling has really fucked me up. Um, but, <coughs> yeah. Then, guys, listen, content. Uh, engagement is always good. But, guys, if you do have questions, we've still got 16 minutes. Please do look, put a like in the video as well. Or a dislike if you don't like the content. Um Still engagement. Um, is there a magic bullet for getting a new website ranked faster for a competitive local niche, Chris? A magic bullet? I don't know if there's a magic bullet. I think just following a, a quality process, you know, getting your 25 pages up, creating your GMB asset, creating your social profiles, linking everything together, creating your branded web twos, maybe you issue a press release. Uh, regarding the new site build out, um, maybe run some ads to it, whether it's Google or Facebook or Reddit or whatever, get some traffic to the domain. I think that's following that plus some other things I'm sure I missed um, will is probably one of the best ways or the bullet, you know, just doing those, the work is, is the magic bullet. Yeah. But I think in <laughs> a competitive niche is something you should try and take out of oh, your, yes. <laughs> Thought process, you know, just do what's required um, in the sequence that someone is suggesting, um, and it will happen, and and it can happen relatively quick. Um, to be fair, you know, um, but I think trying to do it fast is where you're going to start to go backwards. Um, you know, just do things and make it. Just do, just do the work. The, the process takes time. You know, you get your citations, you get this, you get that. Um, so. It does take time. I just think trying to rush it is where people go massively wrong. Um, so hopefully that helps. Another lesson I learned the hard way. Don't rush. Take your time one at a time. <laughs> yes. That's great advice. Great. Excellent advice. Um, um, <laughs> another GMB question. Um, where in insights in the GMB do you find the keywords that the customers are using to find your business? I'm only seeing direct discovery and branded categories. Well, welcome to your first day of GMBs, Glen Art. Um, but up in the uh, GMB is a great property. Um, so when you go into your um, asset um, inside of Google My Business and, you know, the, the blue thing, I'm, I'm pulling it up real quick. It's in the right hand corner. Uh, but let me tell you exactly where it is. So I don't want to lead you and you'll say, oh, it's not there. I want to make sure I give you the right one. So let me just see. <laughs> um, so when you come inside of here, you go to your insights first. And then in the very top, you'll see new profile performance. Click on that. So when you click on that, it's going to give you your overview. And as you scroll down, you'll see, you know, your business had 2,696 searches for, you know, DUI attorney or whatever you're doing. When you click on see more, you'll see your search breakdown. Now that search breakdown, you're going to see up at the top how people are finding your asset. As you start scrolling down, you'll see that top batch right there. The main ones, these are the ones that we want to increase. Once you start seeing the Pac-Man symbol, um, you know, you can look through those. Um, you probably don't want to increase those numbers too much, especially if we're using micro workers, right? We want to, we want to increase what we're already receiving. Okay. So that's how you do it, my friend. Cool. Hopefully that helps you. And Jordan did stick that in there as well for anyone who missed there you it. Go. <laughs> um, so he beat you to it, Chris. Not quick <laughs> enough. Beat you up. Sharper, faster. Um, I just want to tell him where it was, though. Like, how do you yeah. answer? You got to click this, then this. No, but I like <laughs> I liked your detailed description. Yeah. Um, a battle FPV, perfect on the right track. Then patience is <laughs> the key to this. Like most of the times when clients fail, if you're doing client work or, or, or when I've done client work and stuff, the, the failure was the impatience of the clients. They were just expectations were up there and we had to do a whole bunch of stuff and we just never got the time to do it. And that's, you know, and, and I get impatience, but patience is key in this game because there is no quick 
fast way of doing things. It's just a process of shit to fix and clean up and whatever you're doing uh, to rank a website or a GMB. And uh, that does take a bit of time, sadly. But <coughs> you are on the right track. That's all that matters. Um, Mark Flanagan, regarding his previous question, trying to understand if it's okay to have an internal link within the header tag. Many WordPress templates do this automatically with post grids. Does Google ignore the H if it's within a link or should you avoid it? So do you, I, I've, I've never had a link in my header tags on a page. Definitely. I, I, I enjoy it quite extensively, especially if it's a supporting article. Um, supporting articles but not the h1 so if you want to do an h2 or an h3 a supporting heading tag or a supporting heading zone and then you want to link say to a high commercial intent page um like up in your silo then yes is it overlooked no i don't believe so because if you search for that specific keyword or that phrase you're not probably page one for but you'll show up for it and you'll see okay this page is getting indexed for this so um I don't think they overlook it, and yes, I do it, and I don't use the H1 tag. I usually use like H2s or H3s. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're going to do it, do it in lesser header tags, um, and not on the money page either. Like if it's a page I really want to rank, it's usually within the supporting articles. So I'm yeah. giving a lot of importance then to that page, obviously internally. That's how I look at it. Is that right? <laughs> It works. <laughs> you know? Listen, yeah. if it works for you, I don't personally do it. Um, I, I don't have um, links within my header tags, um, and it works for me. So, um, I've also done sidebars. They work very well. Yeah. You know, anything like that. But I'm trying to show importance. It's kind of like with – I'm just trying to show importance, more importance. Um, but, yeah, header tags, are they more important than normal – it's always good to test these things. As I say, how much of exactly. a difference does it make? Is anyone's guess how much weight is put behind that against, you know, just a standard... Uh, it's in the body. Thing. It's yeah. in the body in a heading tag. Like, how much more important can I make a particular whatever I'm pointing at? It doesn't yeah. get any more important than that. In the body, and it's in a header? You know, uh, for me, it's probably just part of the process. I never my, really thought about it. My theory is, it's just how much weight do Google actually give to that now? Um, you know, it's the same as years ago. <coughs> footer links used to get a lot of weight, um, and now I feel that footer and sidebar links don't get the same weight past them than something that's in the main body of an article. Um, I just think they're discounted somewhat, but again, that might just be, no, no one's ever come out and said that from Google, but you've just got your own kind of theories around things and um, try that shit out. But yeah, body is probably the best for sure yeah yeah um and as i see header tag uh, sorry header in a, the, the main body of an article is supposed to be important so why not try it um and glenn Art has found the keywords for the gmb now um i tried to look at mine because it'll probably say Craig the bitch or something. Um, <laughs> um, I'm only kidding, but um, yeah. Um, but if you've got questions, guys, keep them coming. We still have like 12 minutes left of the live. Please do also um, give a like on the video. And I've had fun with that too. Like you'll make it like a really long string. And you'll run some searches just to see, and it'll show up in there too. It's fun. Like, just like stack up some words in there and then start running it. And then you'll scroll down and you'll be like, ah, there it is. It's pretty, it's not accurate, accurate, but it's pretty accurate. I'm like, I know I sent 50 and you go check and it'll be a Pac-Man, you know? <laughs> I'm going to, uh, so I've been doing a few tests with Mark, who's in your group, um, with phones just for GMBs. We're just fucking around, um, doing a bit of testing, but you just give me an idea on what to test on his. Um, so, <laughs> and so yeah, because Mark's big into going into the insights and finding out what went on where and, and stuff like that. But we and then, I actually need to speak to Holly because Holly said something to me, and I don't know if this comes up in your um, 
when you've been testing. But we went out last week and we had something like 35 phones. Now, when we done, uh, what we done was manually just went into every phone, um, went to the GMB and request directions. Now, of course, requesting directions is not the only thing you can do in a GMB. However, when we done that with all of those phones, only 15 of them showed up on the insights. So for request directions, only 15 of them were phoned up. Now, I had Holly Starks on a, on a podcast or whatever it was, and I said to her, Holly, like, are you actually running around with 100 phones? And she went, nah, I like take out 12 at a time. 12 is the optimal number. Now, I'm not sure if there's something in that where if you do more, they're just it's just not shown up on GMB, but that's twice we've tested that, and twice we cannot get past 15 request revisions, and we've used more than 30 phones, so only half of them are shown up, and all of these phones have got different SIM cards, different personas behind them, everything, so have you ever seen anything like that, or get any ideas what the fuck's going on there? No, but it could just be within that, that frame, maybe they're only counting 12. Like, have you tried it maybe the next hour and then did another 12 and saw if it showed up again? No, like maybe it's just that. within that little burst or that little window. Maybe it's only counting 12. Yeah. And yeah, no, I never, but I do think that's interesting though. It's kind of like if, if you're stacking keywords in a URL to start running traffic, that's actually the magic number is 12. So you have your brand name that's going to count, right? And then you had 11 more. If you go any more, the knowledge panel won't trigger. So I think it's funny that you said 12. Yeah, that's the same with the string. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, I, yeah I, no, I never actually asked. Um, I need to ask Holly actually um, off here. I'll ask her. But <coughs> um, to answer Craig Mullins' question, no, we didn't do the directions from the same location. We started a few at one location, then we drove like a couple of miles up the road, stopped, done it again. So the, these were all done as part of the journey. Um, so they weren't all done from the one location, which is, uh, you know, we, we, we wanted to do it that way anyway, just so that it appeared more natural. Um, don't get me wrong, like, the, 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 when we look in Local Falcon, there was a positive upturn, but that 15, um, we cannot get past it, um, and I'm not sure why. Um, you know, we had a mixture of Androids and uh, iPhones as well, because, like, 10 of the phones are mine. I think 25 were Mark's. Uh, <laughs> Mark's got a whole bunch of Androids. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's bizarre, bizarre. But I'll dig deeper. I'm doing more testing, and I'll, I'll keep you guys in the loop um, with with what's going on there. Um, and Facebook user, <coughs> I'm sorry, I missed um, that where do you find your words in your that your GMB ranks for. So, Chris, do you want to quickly... Um, yeah, if you just go to the left-hand side and then click on info, I believe it was, or insights, insights. When you click on insights. It's up at the top, see performance, click on see performance. And then when you're on that screen, just scroll down a little bit and it'll see, it'll say like, uh, this is what your business is showing up for. There you go. And, uh, ZD electrical. What are you saying, Craig? Tomorrow is the virtual Christmas party. We could hop on. No problem at all for. 10 minutes, but I'll be pissed and so will everyone else. But yeah, Mark's coming to my Christmas works night out. I've invited him because he's just a freelancer. So got to got to get him along there and um let him have a bit of fun. So that should be a good night out and we might gate crash your party or your group. Oh, I got some fun tests for tomorrow too. <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to come in and shit on it. I'll come in all drunk and shit. Ah, fuck <laughs> these tests. Um, so apologies in advance if that happens, but I'll try not. Um, so, Abid, what's your suggestion about Google's product review guide latest? Um, and how do I do that? I'm from India and we can't ac have access to every product, even for US people. It's tough to buy every product and review. I'm not. Um, oh, they, they, they've asked to provide a visual, audio, and evidence of your own experience. Okay. Of what, though? What are you trying to do, buddy? What are you, what are you trying to do? 
yeah, let us know what you're trying to do. Yeah, Abby. what are you trying to do? I'll be happy to help you. I just need to know what you need. Um, Craig Mullins doesn't see a lot of data in his GMB either. That I know is happening. Google doesn't show everything. No. Yeah, it's definitely not showing everything. Um, but <laughs> when you're doing testing uh, and you see Holly with 100 phones and then you're going out with 35 and only 15 are showing up, I need to know why she said 12. That is what's playing in my mind. I'm like, she fucking said 12. It wasn't like around about 12. It was 12. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, fuck. Um, so that's where I need to get her. Um, I'll get her on Facebook after this, actually, and just ask her the question. I'm sure if I'm nice to Holly, she'll give me an early Christmas present and just say, Craig, that's what it is. Like, everything <laughs> else is ignored. So there you go. <coughs> I'll get so Nigel Edmonds. I'll get bloated on Buckfast in your honour tomorrow night. Do it. Um, why Do not? It. Um, why not? It's coming up to Christmas. It's the the season of goodwill. So Nigel, how about it? it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abid um, is is tr trying to get into affiliate marketing, Amazon affiliate specifically, and. Uh, so he can't have access to every product, even for US people. So it's it's tough to buy every product and review it. Like, why would you need to review it? Like, yeah. As an Amazon affiliate, like what? I get that every product is not available in India, for example, but you don't need to buy it to review it. Like, I think you're missing. I would, right. So here, I've got. I've, I, listen, I've came to a conclusion. When you do an Amazon product review, if you're selling something. You don't have to physically have touched that product or even bought it before. You just come up with some bullshit fucking story. Um, now, this bottle of water I do have in my hands, but do I have to have it in my hands to write about it and review it? No. So that is what, I, if I'm grasping this right, I think <laughs> Google are asking for people to provide their own experience. Listen, what Google asked for, Abbott? And what they get are two different things. I can guarantee you anyone in here who's done affiliate marketing has never touched the fucking product ever. No Physical product, products. No a lot product of is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> dude, that isn't what you have to do. Um, if you want to promote motors, you know, I don't know, bikes, I should say it's bikes. Um, you don't have to buy a bike to review that. You just see what other people are writing and come up with your own story and put it in your website. And if people click on your website and buy on Amazon, you get your commission. End of story. That's no it. questions asked. And you could go out and do some, <laughs> read the reviews that they're already getting that are authentic reviews and then make your, you know, craft what you say inside of your article based on those reviews. Even if you want to go that far, <laughs> I think that's completely up to you. I mean, I hope that you're not under the impression that when you're going out and you're seeing a review for the top 10 blenders, that some guy went out and bought all 10, set them up, and then he's given his honest account of what, what happened there. I, I highly doubt it, my friend. <laughs> well, I'm going to say something controversial. <clears throat> I've never known anyone that's done Amazon affiliate that's ever bought a product to test out to review it. <laughs> um, never. Uh, maybe it's just the people I... I surround myself with that are dodgy bastards, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but nah, you don't have to do that, Abid. So just write write the reviews, um, get your website ranking, put your affiliate link in, boom, you're you're making money. And also, Abid, <coughs> if you're selling bikes and someone else was to go in there and buy nappies, now I don't know why I've just said nappies, but you will also get the commission for that too, and you don't have to review them either. So you get that 24-hour cookie policy. Um, that's part of the update. Come on. Um, now, I'm, I'm sure that it is in the terms of conditions, but I am not buying into the fact that people have got to now buy that to do Amazon affiliate, um, and they want to see proof of it. That That's... That's going to ruin Amazon. Listen, I think Amazon actually don't want people to do affiliate anymore. They've cut the commissions three times in the last four years or whatever it is. Um, and, to, you know, when that last big update came out, I actually sold all my Amazon affiliate websites because 
they're bitches and they, they, <laughs> they don't want to pay out. You know, it's really that simple. Um, and if they're making that a new requirement, then more fool people who actually do that requirement. Because I, I I just think that will kill Amazon affiliate off altogether if they're going to actually police that. Um, so if it is a new requirement, <coughs> then you really are going to struggle and you're going to be you're going to be bankrupt very, very quickly. So if I want to do the top five cookers, I need to go and buy five cookers to review them. Come on, man. Um, that, that makes no sense on Amazon's part. Not that I'm disputing what you're saying, Sean, um, but that just is insane if that's what Amazon are asking for. So uh, that's why I stick to to like SEO affiliate stuff. It's just easier. Um, and you get the tool for free and you can try it out. So... Um, they doubled your commissions for December. Fuck's sake. Um, maybe we should go back to Amazon. So, Sean, are you physically buying all the products and then reviewing them? Yeah, that's a... Them? So, is that a... Is that a seek? Is that a hack? Is that like, hey, if I buy it from Amazon, proof proof of purchase, and then me, you know, go through the process, do I get a bonus for this? I have an Amazon affiliate for... Uh, what did, I only have one. What is it for? Oh, it's for parts for um, uh, like PlayStations, Xboxes, things like that. Yeah. Uh, and I think I make a whopping 280 bucks a month off that. <laughs> 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 I haven't updated that sucker. And it clicks like clockwork, though. I never really uh, never played with it anymore. Jordan uh, says GMB 10 times this commission. So suck it, affiliate. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so we've got two last questions. That's fun. And then we are wrapping up because we are out of time. Have either of you seen negative effects of 301 ing multiple domains to the same site too fast? Can you add too many 301s to the same website? So generally, if we want to <laughs> say go out and do if we want to buy multiples. All right. So have I ever seen a problem? No, but generally we're going to send them into subdomains um, a lot of times uh, or internal pages. Um, and I never did more than say 20. So let's, I, if you go above that, I don't know what, what's going to happen, um, but I've never seen any issues with that. No. Sean Little is saying the requirement is to show proof as part of the Google update. So that product review update, not Amazon. So you need to prove that you've had that product now before you can do that. That's that's still going to be hard to police. How about you, Craig? <coughs> Have you seen a negative effect from uh, sending in multiple 301s to a property? Um, no. I mean, I've, I've done it before and not seen a massive uplift because I hadn't done it properly. Um, but I've not seen like a penalty or anything like that. Now, well, when I say that... Um, have I ever done negative SEO towards something um, and used really dodgy, spammy things and uh, sent them to someone's website? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. Um, but just simply doing a kind of relatively clean website and 301 in it, I just don't think – I think Google's clever enough to just discount it. If something was spammed or, pe spammed or penalized – then I do have evidence that Google will catch it and fuck you. Um, so I can I can show that um, on certain websites. But it's a different thing altogether. Just doing simple 301 redirects, no. Um, but I wouldn't be doing a whole lot of them anyway. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the, the redirect method. I would rather build an asset and, and just link from that asset to it. So building PBNs is more my thing. Um, you know, I like to build out an expired domain name and uh, make it, potentially another asset that I've got um, and use it for multiple link building opportunities as well as an affiliate website, as well as whatever other monetization method I can squeeze out of it, including AdSense and whatnot. So hopefully that helps you. Andrew Powell, last question. I have a dental client with 14 locations. Would you build citations for the main location only or would you build citations for each location page on the website that has a unique clinic address? He wants to rank each location in maps for each clinic, but but it's one website with a location silo. So, Chris. All right. So on that site, you have 
multiple locations and you're listing those details on each of those pages, I assume, right? So it's not like a site-wide footer with the main location or the headquarters. And then you have a verified GMB for each of those assets. And you're pointing those verified GMB assets to the internal page, going to that location on that location page. Um, do I want to build out citations for each of those? Definitely. Um, excellent answer. And I'm going to just do this final one and that's it. Um, a reputable news website, the link is do follow, but towards the end there was a disclaimer um, that the content is written by a third party and the newspaper doesn't take responsibility. Is that still going to be a powerful link? Um. If, if anywhere on that page, this is just my opinion, just what I've seen when buying this kind of stuff. If it, if there's any type of, um, you know, like promotion or any types of words like this, where it's blatantly obvious, that could be one of them. Um, I would, I would say that, uh, I'm, I might steer clear. However, if it's super high power and it says that I wouldn't be overly concerned. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm the same. Uh, a link's a link to me. I don't give a fuck what the small print says. Um, I mean, if that's your only option, I mean, I'm sure there's still power, but I yeah. But Chris, before we do wrap up, um, so with Mike and Brad, our final show of the year is next week. Do you want to do that as well, so that we have Christmas period off? And um, so we'll just do like a final last one of the year next week. Um, and then, because that will be like the 14th or something. And then after that, it's the week of Christmas. And then after that, it's the week of New Year. So are we going to do one final one next week? Um, and then... Uh, well, I don't want to do a final. Final for the year. Yeah, yeah, No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just wanted to check. So, guys, we will be back next week. But after that, we're going to take a two-week break um, for Christmas and stuff. Um and then we will catch you in the new year. But make sure you come back next week, loaded up with loads of questions uh, for the final one, and do check out Chris Palmer, and do like the video, and do check out ODYS, <laughs> and check out Jordan Pierce, and Randy Rode, um, and all the other guys in there as well. So, yeah, it has been a pleasure, everyone, and we will pleasure. catch you later on.